And without further ado, folks, I would like to introduce uh, Vicki. We all know her. We all love her. Uh, Miss Lauren Marie Taylor from Friday of the New Park Theater. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, all you teachers out there. So, from what I understand, you, you guys like stayed in the camp. 
Um, when you were shooting the movie, was it like shenanigans? Like, what was that like? Yeah, so they put us up, you know, now it would, it, you would never hear of this because now you do a movie and they put you in a trailer or they put you in like a really schmoozy, fancy hotel. Back then, you know, the union was nowhere to be found, even though we were all in the Screen Actors Guild. And they had us sleeping in these cabins up the hill from the Pakanak Lodge where we were filming. So here we were, it was late summer, early fall, and we had all these summer clothes on, all these skippy things, except me who had this, the ugly sweater and the cargo pants. <laughs> and, and, and well, yeah, they didn't come on till later, but yeah. I, oh, God, I, it's so cringe-worthy, this <laughs> It's become iconic, though. It's iconic, but um, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, we, so we stayed in the cabins where we were filming, and they all got wind of the fact that I had never really been out of New York City before, and they pranked me by scratching on the screens and making sounds, you know, in the cabins and scaring me walking up the hill. It just, they really took advantage of the fact that they took a girl out of the Bronx and plucked her and put her in the middle of nowhere in Connecticut. Just wasn't okay. Yeah, it was not okay. Now, Amy Steele, um, when I talked with her, she actually, like, went to high school at the same high school I went to and in the same town and saw Friday the 13th part two in the same theater that I used to, but I saw them all in, like, you know, the ones I also saw in the theater. Um, did you go see them with your friends or did you, was there a premiere? Or no, 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 no. I mean, there was, we went to see it at the Directors Guild of America. They have a theater in New York City near the Plaza Hotel there. And we got to see it there. But I went to a regular theater and saw it there and just kind of sat there like this. <laughs> kind of like the way I'm going to be back there tonight. I'm like, <laughs> And then, you know, the underwear scene comes and it's like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's pretty much what it was. I pretty much went by myself to see it and just kind of hid. But then, you know, you leave the theater and people are just kind of like, nah. <laughs> like, no, okay, it wasn't me. You know, that's my next question. Do you ever get recognized from the Yeah. Like, yeah, you're like, yeah. what's Marie doing? Yeah, Who yeah. Who's shopping? Well, what they do is they're like, okay, okay, here, perfect example. So I got one of the t-shirts, one of the new t-shirts that came out from Gutter Garbs um, with the Friday 13th Part 2 logo with Amy Steele with her, her rake or whatever it's called, the pitchfork. And on the back they had different scenes and whatnot. And I'm hiking with one of my dogs, you know, in upstate where I live. And this guy's, you know, kind of like hiking. And he goes past me and he kind of turns around and looks because he saw the back of my shirt. And then he looked at the front. And I'm hiking with my dog. And all of a sudden this guy's coming back towards me. Like this, you know, well not walking backwards. But <laughs> Um, he goes like this, he goes, I really like your t-shirt. And I looked and I went, thanks. I said, have you ever seen Friday the 13th Part 2? And he went, say that again? I said, have you ever seen, he goes, your voice. I went, yeah, it's me. <laughs> he goes, so what are those brown underwears yours? <laughs> I'm in the middle of the lower Adirondacks and they're asking me about my brown underwear. <laughs> No, okay, so who asked me today about brown underwears, right? Raise up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you. So I did a podcast recently with Nostalgia Cafe, and um, uh, uh, one of the people on the podcast asked me about the brown underwears. And I said, okay, let me tell you this. I have my, I'm very organized, I'm really kind of anal that way. But I, so I have my underwear drawer, and I have, and it's pretty, because of Friday 13 Part 2, so I have all my underwears folded a certain way, and it's like, the satin ones, the lace ones, the boy shorts, you know, the ones that you wear when you exercise, the ones that you wear when you don't care who looks at your butt, it's like, who cares, you know? And then there's like the ones you would never wear. And it's kind of like, yeah, that's kind of where I would put the brown underwear, but I have not one pair of brown underwear now. <laughs> <laughs> just say that. <laughs> Um, you were also in another one of my favorite slasher movies, um, Girls Night Out, aka okay, Scaremaker. Yeah. Do you have any like, interesting stories about working on that? I, it's like a blur to me. Oh. <laughs> no, and it's funny because I just did another thing where we were talking about that, and I had just, pardon me, I'm going to adjust my bra, it's like everything's falling, I got like, hit off again. I'm just saying. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Check my IMPD and know how old I am. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, just kidding. I swear I don't smoke anything. <laughs> I swear I don't. 
I know it's legalized, but I don't. I know I'm a child of the 60s, but I don't. Um, but I was talking about how I had just finished doing the movie Neighbors with John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, and I jumped right from that to doing Girls' Night Out. And because I was still involved with a lot of the guys uh, from Neighbors, the whole early Girls' Night Out experience was a blur because I'd go from filming to going to hanging out with John Belushi and Danny Aykroyd. Yeah. Did I hear an um? <laughs> Did somebody read The Enquirer back in 1980? <laughs> Early 81 that I don't know about? <laughs> so yeah, so the beginning of that was kind of a blur um, in terms of girls like that. I actually don't remember filming it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Did you um? I, on the uh, so like memories you mentioned that you were like I was like I grew up a Catholic girl. Was your fa family like you're doing a horror movie? Like was that like an issue? Or were they just excited that you're like paranormal movie? Well, that was the thing about doing part two. Okay, so I was cast as the girl next door. You know, really innocent. You know, I was from the Bronx. I was kind of like. You know, like this is stuff, girl. You know, like are you talking to me? I'm suck my teeth at you. You're gonna suck your teeth at me? Are you kidding me? You know, I was like, come on, bring it on, like that. And um, so I go up, you know, to do this. I'm like, mm -hmm, in the dark. So I, even though I had this kind of tough Bronx girl facade, I was raised very strict Catholic. So I only had two boyfriends between life and college. I'm not kidding. I know. I was, yeah. Now I'm looking at my. <laughs> Wait, where is she? With the, you know, who's I leaned against tonight? Where is she? <laughs> with the Jason thing? Anyway, um, but yeah, so I was really an innocent, not an innocent, but I was just very sheltered. And so there's Tom McBride, you know, he's like, oh, like, like this. And there's Bill Randolph, and he's like, and then there's Stu Charno, and he's like, <laughs> this. So I'm like targeting, like, who, who can I flirt with? So of course I go to flirt with Tom McBride because he's my co-star, and he's like, don't swing that way, honey. <laughs> so then I kind of, you know, like go towards, you know, Bill Randolph a little bit, and he's like, you're not hot enough for me. So I'm just kind of like, slinking off like this to my cabin all the time. John Fury was out of my league. <coughs> yeah, no, he was out of my league, you know. He wasn't with Amy Steele, but they were uh, good friends. Okay. So he was out of my league in terms of just getting attention. Right. So I just kind of slinked off, and I didn't hook up with Warrington, but I, I did know. have a crush on Warrington Gillette. Steve Nash. He well, no, he did stunts, so I wasn't around for his stuff. You weren't around for that kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I was around with Warrington, and he was very charming. Yeah. Very charming. No, I did not strip him. <laughs> now, you, now you're seeing like it's iconic in the movie because you are there the moment that we see Jason for the first time with the bag, yes. and, like, you know. Exactly. Yeah. What was it like shooting that? Like you know. It was crazy because yeah. it, it was it was that moment where he sits up in bed and you knew that that was the moment that the audience was going to see the sackhead for the first time and just that whole iconic look that was going to happen because the last time we saw him he was this bald you know, strange looking, you know, E.T. type of thing that came out of the water. It's like, where's, where's your Dreyfus when we need him here, you know? It's close encounters coming out of the water here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so when, when uh, actually it was Jerry Walls, the crew guy who jumps out of the bed, it was scary. And when Steve Miner, the director, got wind of the fact that I could scream very loudly for a long period of time, like most of my boyfriends finally got, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's when he decided to prolong that shot for the kill. A lot of people say, well, weren't, weren't there more stabbings and stuff like that? And I said, no, he just really wanted to hear that scream go on forever. And then I wound up going on to dub other horror movies. Did you? Yeah, yeah. for other actresses who couldn't prolong the scream. So you're the, you're the scream and like other for stuff? some other movie. movies. I yeah. won't mention that, but yeah, some of them are pretty big. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right on. yeah awesome. I got paid to do it, so. Why not? Get paid to scream, I mean. You want to. You're loving this. I know you're loving this too much, man. I'm going to bring you with me wherever I go. Let's go home. <laughs> oh, so yeah, just, um, oh, I guess my husband. Husband. No, no, no. Bostwick from Girls Night Out. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> 
bring your husband on Girls Night yeah, Out. Yeah, I met my husband on Girls Night Out. So that's the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I left him home alone for an evening. Have your kids seen him? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my daughter, uh, my older one, when she was in fifth grade, came home after a sleepover and she just came through like this. I'm down. I'm your mother. What do I do this time? Because as a mom, you're always like, what do I do wrong? They're not what I do wrong. They're like, mm. so she comes home. She goes, okay, so when were you going to tell me? I'm thinking, what did I do? She goes, mom. You were in a horror movie and you never told me. I was in a sleepover and we're watching this horror movie and they're like, that looks just like your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my coming out party. That, that's like, someone else's name. Wait, I could have just like this here again. No, I couldn't say that. They recognize the screaming. <laughs> So I think we're about out of time. Do you want to like kind of like set us off? Do you want to like throw us an intro about what we're about to say? Okay, so here's a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, I know you guys know what's coming, but I just really want to say thank you to everybody who came out. Um, you know, this was such a lark. I was doing outdoor monster mania um, a while back, and a few people said, "Hey, you know, there's a co yeah, there's a colonial theater in Phoenixville, and they're gonna, you know, they show horror movies. You know, you should go sometime and check it out." And then I found out that you guys were doing Friday Thirteen Part Two, and I was like, "Let's check it out. Let's do it like a giant watch party." So if you ever show girls night out, if you show neighbors or girls night out, we're all perfect. But also, just a little bit of, just very quickly, um, a lot of people ask me, you know, what was your first horror movie that you ever saw? It was The Blob. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for coming here. Eat lots of popcorn. I know I'm going to. I'm going to. <laughs> and enjoy, enjoy the show. <laughs> And then we'll get to start after the movie.